What's up, everybody? I'm gonna go through a bunch of old pictures that I have on my computer that are, I probably have 20,000 pictures of geckos, and I thought it would be cool for you guys to see some of them. Um, so I'm gonna make a couple of videos about them. I'm gonna try to make the videos about 15 minutes long so that you guys, um, you know, aren't sitting there for hours. But I'm gonna go through starting with 2006 and show you some of the cool animals that I produced back in the day um, before I really started posting on Facebook. Um, this particular animal was a jungle giant um, that uh, it was one of the lines that I worked on originally, which is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, very, very cool coloration. These guys were all Tremper albinos and um, just they back in the day, they were kind of the best, coolest looking polygenetic animals that you could get. Um, this is another jungle giant. You can see the uh, the carrot head. Um, this one's obviously a banded animal. Um, you can see the carrot tail coming in. The carrot tail would usually come in a little bit later in these animals and kind of get better with time. Uh, this one was in shed. Um, that's the other thing. Going through these pictures, some of them are going to be good pictures. Some of them are going to be a little bit blurry. Um, this is another jungle giant. Um, and he's got his like head all scrunched up, um, probably because I just lifted up the thing and he was scared at the time. Um, another jungle giant. Um, and you can see like the, the orange starting to take over the body. Um, that's what we were kind of trying to do in the beginning stages of the jungle giant project was to have the orange take over the whole body. But actually in reality, we should have stuck with the higher contrast because those ones all, always looked cooler. Um, and because of the us trying to have the color overtake the whole body, um, it was a project that we were working on before the after was actually a thing. And then once the after came out, we realized that it wasn't, um, you know, we kind of should have stuck to the high contrast stuff. Um, this is a Tremper Blazing Blizzard from back in the day. Um, if you look real closely, you can tell that it has some eye pigmentation. Um, I bought, uh, six of these animals originally just so that I could, it was another one, just so that I could test out the eye pigmentation, um, in how it worked with the raptor. Um, so as you can see, a lot of these animals have the eye pigmentation and that's what I wanted. Um, these Tremper Blazings were actually crossed to a Max Snow Het for Raptor. And those, um, these females were actually used to produce the first uh, Super Snow Blazing Blizzard um, Eclipse and uh, Raptor, um, which was pretty cool. So that's a little history lesson. These animals were from 2006. Um, and you'll see in probably the 2007-ish, 2008 video that I'll make, um, the final results of that project. Here's another one. As you can see, they have eye pigmentation and that's pretty common in Tremper Blazings, um, but it is not related to the Eclipse trait. Um, this is one of the original Marble Eye animals um, from 2006. Um, they were, they popped out of Tremper Sunglows. Um, it's a little bit blurry of a picture. Here's another one. Um, back in the day, I didn't have a great camera, so some of these pictures will be super blurry. Um, if you notice, uh, which you won't be able to see in this one, so I'm just going to not talk about that. Um, this is an eclipse animal, um, one of the uh, first eclipses ever to be really produced um, since it was 2006 that this animal hatched. Um, super uh, pale looking animal, um, very little eclipse uh, eye pigmentation to it. Another Tremper Blazing Blizzard um, with the eye pigmentation. Again, it's probably a blurry picture. Um, it's not as clear as most of the pictures. Um, this is actually the first Fasciolatus male um, that I ever uh, imported into the United States. Um, pretty cool animal. So the first Fasciolatus that were actually bred in the United States came from this male right here. Um, this is one of the original Super Snows that was ever produced. Um, this animal only got to about 45 grams and she was the mother, I believe, to um, the first ever Max Snow Het for Raptor that ultimately produced um, Mac Raptors and Mac Eclipses and stuff like that. Um, this is one of the uh, um, Rainbow Stripe Project animals um, that Alberto kind of coined the name for those guys. 
Um, this basically ended up being what we now consider a patternless stripe. Um, this is one of the animals that the G project actually originated from, is from that project. Uh, another jungle giant. Another jungle giant, another jungle giant with a cool pattern. Um, another one, you can see that we were trying to make the color overtake the whole body. Um, again, probably not our best decision, um, which the high contrast ones are actually prettier. Um, excuse the messy cage. Um, this is one of the marble eye animals, um, the original marble eyes, uh, another original marble eye animal. Um, this was also a marble eye animal. Um, back in the day, the first ones were sun glow trempers. Um, so this is just one of those. Um, this is just a random tangerine. I don't even know why I have a picture of it, honestly. Um, this is another tangerine that I had. Um, as you can see, tangerines back in the day weren't as pretty. Um, they're kind of mediocre. Um, now they're much brighter in coloration. Uh, this is an eclipse animal. Uh, another view of that eclipse animal. Um, these were patternless stripe animals um, from a red stripe cross. Another eclipse animal. This eclipse is actually um, the animal that I called Phoenix. Um, he was the one that survived the fire and was actually het free. Um, so he actually um, was the, you know, father, grandfather of my typhoon projects and my um, radar projects. Um, this is another picture of him. Uh, another patternless stripe animal, another patternless stripe animal, another patternless stripe animal. Again, these are the base of um, what would later become the G project. Um, another patternless stripe-ish, stripey animal out of focus. Uh, more jungle giants, which are pretty cool. Uh, jungle giants. I'm going to go through some of these a little bit faster. This is one of the uh, first aptor animals. Um, you can see the color overtakes the whole body, probably about 25% carrot tail. Uh, same animal, different picture. Uh, patternless stripe animals. Uh, these are the Tremper Blazings with the uh, pigmentation in the eyes. Um, same animals. Marble eye animals. Um, another cute picture. Uh, some random geckos. One of the original Super Snows in Shed. Thought it was kind of a cool picture taken through the tub. Uh, the Blizzards. Night Anole that I hatched out. Uh, another Eclipse. Um, this is the Max Snow Het Raptor male. Um, being crossed into uh, aptors. Um, these would in turn um, be some of the basis of the first Max No um, raptors and Max No eclipses ever produced. Uh, this is the Fasciolatus male being bred to the Super Snow female. Um, this is my original um, layout of what um, my breeding plans were for the 2007 season. Um, as you can see, things were color-coded. Um, these ones over here are actually the blizzard females um, and how much eye pigmentation they had. Um, and I was kind of, uh, you know, basically had the three, three females in each tub, and that's how I could identify them was by the eye pigmentation. Um, all of these blue ones over here were bred to the um, Maquette Raptor. Um, let me see if I can remember some of these other ones. Um, these greenish ones in here, um, I want to say that those were, um, bred to the pure eclipse, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the orange ones, um, which are these ones, um, those were the Marble Eye Project, I believe. Um, and then basically each color was a different male. And that uh, male would correlate with a number that was on the tub. And um, all I would write was, um, on the incubation containers, was the, um, the, the number of the tub in the color of the male. And that's how I could tell which parents they were. Um, it was a much easier way to, um, you know, kind of label everything because it was actually just a number and a color. And then I could tell what parents they were. Um, so that's kind of how I did stuff. That was my first year of breeding. 
Um, as you can see, it wasn't very many animals actually at all. Here's some of my rack setups um, from the original year that I was breeding. Um, we had the adult tubs over here. Um, these are the baby tubs and grow outs um, and my workstation there. Um, didn't have very many um, breeders at the time, so it was a very, very small setup. Um, here's a little bit of a, a bigger, um, like a wider angle lens of it. Uh, these were also breeding tubs. These are breeding tubs. These are babies that were raising up. Um, that was just a tank that I had some giant day geckos in. And then I think on the bottom I had like uh, a leopard gecko in a natural environment. Um, here's the basic setup that I used back in the day um, with a calcium powder dish and a millworm dish. Um, back then I, I just put the millworms in a dish and then I had the calcium and vitamin powder in a different dish. Um, that's not how I do things now. Um, and then there was obviously a lay box and then another hide in there. Same thing. Um, this is the Max Snowhead Raptor with, uh, with three of the girls. Um, just showing a setup again. Uh, this is another patternless stripe type animal that would later be part of the G project. Um, this one had really nice color. Um, this is just a male eclipse um, mating with, um, actually I believe that was one of his daughters, um, to test out to see if he was het for tremper. Um, that male ended up being non-het. He was also bred to a couple tremper females as well that year. Um, this was actually a picture taken showing ovulations. Uh, you can see the ovulations right there. Um, hopefully you can see that on the screen. Um, this is a blurry picture of the same thing. Got ovulations here and here. Uh, another kind of uh, picture of uh, females right after they laid eggs. Um, she hasn't even covered them up yet. Um, also kind of a cool shot. Um, this is just another, oh, this is a morning gecko that I had back in the day. Um, here's, uh, basically the, the breeders. I ended up moving the racks this way, so it was easier to, um, check everything out. And as you can see on the tubs, they had the color of the animal, uh, color of the male, I should say, and then each tub had its own number. So it was one through 12 over here. Um, actually it wasn't one through 12 because I had extras, um, and, because of, you know, some of the numbers being messed up, like it was like one through 10 here, but then it had like some later numbers down here um, that were being bred to the fasciolatus male. So they weren't actually in order. It was order of like ease of having them in the racks because these ones were all the same male. These two were the same male. Um, these four were the same male. This one was its own male. Um, and then there was like, these were all the same male. Um, same thing over here where there was all the same male, all the same male, same male. Um, so they they weren't actually in numerical order. Um, they were in order of how to put them in the rack so that the male um, was just in a, in a group of animals. This is a side view of everything. Um, another picture of it. This is the, you know, wider angle of it with the baby racks on this side and the adult racks on that side. Same picture, uh, more animals breeding. Um, another picture, these look like, um, it looks like the animal that we thought was the, the male um, that would be het marble eye crossed to the marble eye females. Um, whenever we bred that male to the marble eye females, nothing, uh, no marble eyes actually popped out. So what we did was take a baby from the actual marble eye females, bred those back to the um, to the marble eye females, and that's whenever we produced the first marble eyes, or the, the proved out the first marble eyes. This was just a bell albino baby that I had um, that looked kind of cool back in the day. This is the fasciolatus male. Again, um, same thing, fasciolatus male. This was one of the first fasciolatus females that I had um, to make pure ones. This is another fasciolatus female. Um, an eclipse that um, was kind of like a patternless stripe eclipse, kind of cool, more bold pattern to it. Um, this was a bad picture taken outside um, that I was trying to show off the color, but I obviously couldn't take pictures of animals back then. Um, same thing, I was just kind of trying to hone my skills on 
taking pictures of the animals. This is another marble eye animal. Um, these are jungle giant patternless stripe trempers. Um, same thing. Um, there's going to be a lot of the same animals in here. So I'm going to try to scroll through a little bit faster so I can get to some animals that were uh, a little bit different. This is just a tremper sun glow um, that could have been possible het for marble eye, but it turned out not to be. It was a, it was a different line of tremper sun glows that didn't have the marble eye in it. Um, this is Phoenix, um, RIP buddy. Um, he was the original Eclipse that I used um, and test bred um, to be het free. And he, this is just a cute picture of him. Um, he was an awesome animal. Like I said, he was one of the only animals that survived the fire that I had. And he lived um, probably about 10 years, I would say, um, which is pretty awesome considering he survived a fire. Uh, again, another really cool looking animal. A lot of these first pictures that you'll see are me trying to figure out how to best take pictures of the animals. Um, another cool picture of Phoenix. Um, and trying to zoom in and all that stuff. A lot of these pictures are blurry and they kind of suck, honestly. Um, so hopefully we can just kind of scroll through some of these. Uh, the first One of the first super snow females. Um, this looks like a raptor female that I had. Another raptor female with solid red eyes. Um, this is kind of a cool looking eye shot of an animal. And then trying to zoom in, it just made it worse. Um, the marble eye animals, which they they just look so cool on a on a tremper sun glow. Um, actually, that's probably the best looking marble eyes or tremper sun glows, honestly. Um, those are tremper or those are. Um, sun glows without the marble eye, obviously. Um, so you can kind of see what the difference looks like. Um, this is a Belle Albino. Um, she was bred to the Eclipse that year to, um, make hets for, or double hets, I should say, for, uh, for the, uh, radar project. And then these are some of the first babies that I hatched out in the 2007 year. And I think that'll be a good spot to stop. Um, for this video, and then I will go into the 2007 animals.